Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We start the proceedings with recitation from Holy Quran. Al-Qur'an ar-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wattini wa tini wa turi sinin. Fahadha al-baladi al-Amin. Laqad khalaqna al-insan fi ahsan taqweem. ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين اس کا ترجمہ ہے قسم ہے انجیر اور زیتون کی اور تور سینا کی اور اس پرمن شہر مکہ کی ہم نے انسان کو بہترین ساخت پر پیدا کیا پھر الٹا پھیر کر ہم نے سب نیچوں سے نیچا کر دیا سوائے ان لوگوں کے جو ایمان لائے اور نیک عمل کرتے رہے ان کے لیے کبھی ختم نہ ہونے والا عجر ہے پس ہے نبی اس کے بعد کون جزا و سزا کے معاملہ میں تم کو جھٹلا سکتا ہے علیہ صلاح بحکم الحاکمین کیا اللہ سب حاکموں سے بڑا حاکم نہیں ہے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دا نیم اف اللہ دا بینیفیشنٹ دا مرسی فل وطینی و زیتون بائی دا فیق این دا اولیف و توری سینین بائی ماؤنٹین سنائے و حاض البلد الامین این بائی دس لینڈ میڈ سیف لقد خلقنا الانسان فی احسن تقویم شورلی وی کریئیٹڈ مین آف دا بیسٹ ٹیچر Then we reduced him to the lowest of the low. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ عَجْرٌ غَيْرٌ مَمْنُونَ Save those who believe and do good works. And theirs is a reward unfailing. فَمَا يُكَذِبُ كَبَعْدُ بِالدِّينَ So who henceforth will give the lie to die about the judgment? أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ Is not Allah... The most conclusive of all judges. Allah Paak hume Quran and Sunnah par amal karne ki tawfiq ta farmaye. Jaise humne waha pada tha, falha maha fujuraha wa taqwa ha. Ke humne iske upar fujur aur taqwa dono ilham kar diye. Aur qad afla haman zakka ha. To usse milta julta mazmoon hai. Jo qasme khai gai hai, teen zaitun aur tura sinin ki. Uske baare mein mufasreen kehte hai. Ke a teen. Is the name of the mountain where Noah al-Islam preached, and Zaytun is the name of the mountain where Jesus Isa al-Islam did pass most of his life. Waturasinin or Turasina is Moses, Adrat Musa al-Islam, Wahad al-Baradi Lamin, and the sacred city of Mecca. which is protected. So these are the four places where لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي who served the call Hazrat Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam or Nuh alayhi salam So قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ ذَكَّاهَ جنہوں نے اپنے آپ کو پاک کیا So they copy the path of these four, the best of the best abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or jo shaitan ke bande bante hain, wo hi hain kazab asumud bitawwa ha summar adadna hu aswala sahabilin, jo ke had se zyada niche gir jane wale hain. Allah paak hume apne nek bandhon ke nakshe kadam par chalne ki tofi fata farmaye. So I hereby invite Professor Nadeem for it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Our dear students and colleagues. Um, it's very heartening to see the uh, gradual but steady development of the FECO catered course and dealing with all aspects of uh, um, doing phaco surgery in all difficult and in all situations. 
today we are dealing with the subluxations and weak zones and you all know that uh, sometimes uh, even in the pre operative assessments you are not able to fully judge the strength of these zones and when you start the procedures you come up with some some signs uh, during the surgery that the you know, zones are not as strong as you were expecting them to be normally uh, of normal strength so these situations come up not very frequently but they are there and there are situation where we already know that the patient has got weakness in the zones or there is going to be some element of zonal dehiscence or weakness or partial or complete subluxation of the lens and we you have to be ready before you take up the surgery for this kind of situation and dr mazri is very kind that he is continuing this series of of echo cataract course um, Uh, very efficiently and uh, uh, very regularly and uh, we are very grateful to him and i would uh, request dr mazri to please come and start the proceedings thank you sir so this is part 8 we will cross the half way mark today after of our feco cataract course and this is the last lecture in our category 2 of feco cataract course as you know all the first category was feco basics we had four lectures on that the second category which is going to end today is difficult cataract feco and this is the fourth lecture of difficult cataract cases that is dealing with weak zonules and subluxations and next category and the final one will be dealing with complications about feco and then the fourth category will be iul related issues so this will complete our feco course and we proceed with today's lecture that is part 8 of the feco cataract course basics and advanced dealing with weak zonules and subluxations so if we start talking about weak zonules and subluxations so what are the important things how do we classify it may be congenital in a region or acquired congenital is like marfan syndrome wheel marchesani syndrome and so many other rare names and acquired may be due to trauma and another acquired category may be there due to pseudo exfoliation syndrome so pre operative assessment as professor nadeem pointed out is very important we have to have undilated exam and then repeat the examination with maximum midrasses to detect extent of the zonular weakness grading of the cataract presence of vitreous strands in the anterior chamber and peripheral retinal lesions are associated with these subluxations very frequently and the pupils are resistant to dilate but still we need to be cautious and vigilant to find out in all possible way if there is any predisposing retinal issue which need to be taken care of before embarking upon cataract surgery itself and because it has got so many inherent issues and associations which can compromise the prognosis and outcome of the surgery so the counseling becomes even more important because there is possibility of uncertain surgical outcomes the challenges and the consequences of these specially placed tension rings and sutured lenses are different than a successful feco surgery within the bag lens the wheel recovery may be suboptimal because of related macular hyperplasia or 
some macular edema because of the excessive surgical manipulations and there is more chances that these patients may need secondary intervention so all these factors need to be explained to the patient beforehand anesthesia depends on the age and the cooperative nature of the patient it may be peripheral bar or rarely topical anesthesia can be used if the patient is very cooperative and the procedure in our opinion is very straight forward but generally if the patient is young general anesthesia is the thing we need what are the operative tips which make these surgeries different so if we know about the weak zonules then place your incisions away from the area of zonular weakness so that there is no stress on the zonules but it again depends on the surgeon's ability because your surgical skill is more important than just placing the incision away whatever you do in these challenging and complicated and premium situations should be routine this is my message whatever you do in routine regular cases make it a practice only then you can exercise that if you are changing the site of incision according to steeper meridian regularly in your practice only then on the day of that weak zonule case you should be easily changing the place otherwise it can be managed through the same incision similarly the continuous curvilinear capsular axis need to be started in the area of healthy zonules the first push or the raising of the flap will be away from the attached zonules we will pull the capsule from attached to detached zonules so that while pulling the capsular flap there is no stress on the weak zonules and we need to be good with the use of macpherson or utrata forceps in this regard and most of these cases need bimanual manipulations even ccc sometimes you need to support the rest of the lens with the help of second instrument while you are performing ccc and in severe cases a straight needle or 110 blade or 15 degree blade can be even used to give the first nick because it is too mobile a lens and too elastic kind of capsule that interestingly you may be just unable to create the first nick with your cystitome needle so how does the phaco emulsification itself differs ctr can be inserted before phaco emulsification and this is a very common question every time i discuss subluxation then weak zonules there is a question what's the ideal time to insert ctr the ideal time to insert ctr is as late as possible in the surgery but not too late that everything is compromised so what's the ideal time is after phaco emulsification and how, how can you take up phaco emulsification and rexis you will see in the later slides we will be taking benefit from capsule or iris hooks we will be stabilizing the capsule during rexis as well as phaco emulsification with the help of capsule hooks that makes it more easy and after completion of the phaco and 
irrigation aspiration, then we will be inserting the tension rings. That's the ideal time. But in any case, you can insert it just after completion of the rexes as well. So length is stabilized by using, using iris hooks attached to capsular margins. Then we use low power and low vacuum settings and low surge. I mean, low aspiration flow rate, low vacuum and low power. That's known as slow motion FACO or cold FACO. There are different kinds of CTRs available. What we have is simple ring with no hook. And this modification is known as Sioni's ring. We don't have that available. Even the simple CTR will also do the job. So ring is inserted through the same in CN and the rings are available in preloaded shape as well, like preloaded interrupter lenses. But the manual insertion of the ring is not that difficult. And we need to know the wide to wide diameter or the diameter of the lens itself and the length of the eye itself to plan for the CTR. They are generally available 11, 12 and 13 millimeters. If the eye is about wide to wide diameter is between 10 and 12, probably 11 millimeter will be the better choice. And for eyes about up to 22 millimeters. If the eye is 22 to 24 millimeters, 12 millimeter may be the ideal choice. And for myopic eyes, 13 millimeters may be the ideal choice. Because if you choose too big a ring for a smaller eye, it you may compromise and cause more damage than getting the rescue effect of the ring itself. And because this Sioni's ring has got a notch and a hook, it can be sutured to sclera. But what we do is we use the simple ring and we suture the lens itself to the sclera, as you will see in the later slides. So capsular ring can be either sutured or it can be used without suturing. So what's the criteria? Where do we need a suture and where we can just assure the centration and leave the CTR alone with lens in the bag? The criteria is very simple. That's where the nature of the subluxation, subluxation becomes very important. Whether this subluxation is progressive in nature or static in nature. So what are the progressive subluxations? Morphonide, like Wilmer-Chesani, congenital syndromes, we know they are progressive, like pseudo-exfoliation syndrome, we know it's a progressive condition. And what's the example of static subluxation? Traumatic subluxation. If one third of the zonules are damaged, that's it. If half of the zonules are damaged, it will not progress. So if it is non-progressive subluxation or non-progressive zonular compromise, you can just assure the centration in interoperative period and leave it without suturing, without secular fixation or haptic externalization. But if the zonular compromise or the subluxation is progressive in nature, then you do need to take some maneuver to stabilize the IUL capsular bag complex on long-term basis with the help of scleral fixation suture or haptic tucking in the sclera. So pseudo exfoliation is one of the very common conditions in which there is white fluffy material at the papillary margins ground glass appearance of the anterior capsule. It may be associated with elevated IOP and glaucoma. There is more phacodonosis. 
and the chances of lens subluxation are also there. The, generally, the pupil are resistant to dilate, and there may be posterior synechy, and GA chambers may be shallow in cases of pseudo exfoliation syndrome, and it may be associated with pigment dispersion and poor mitrasis, as we already discussed. So, pseudo exfoliation syndrome, if we detect it, is a challenge which should not be taken up by a novice. It should be taken care of by an experienced phaco surgeon because right from the pupil to phacodonosis and other things, all the parameters are challenging and need to be addressed in a programmed sequential manner. So as we see in cases of subluxation, th these are the phaco tips. We can use pupil expanding hooks or devices, or then we can use hooks to stabilize the capsule and be careful. In all these, as we discussed in hypermature cataract, the size of the rexis becomes even more important to be of good size in challenging cases because the smaller size of the rexis will give rise to more manipulations of the nucleus and more stress on the zonules. So in all these cases where there is zonular compromise, the name of the technique will be zonule friendly technique. So what is this zonule friendly FACO technique? Gentle multi-quadrantic hydro dissection and delineation and very gentle rotation of the nucleus. Avoid down sculpting. Don't do any maneuver which increases antero posterior excursion because we know the zonules are under threat. Chopping, you see, in more difficult situations, vertical chop is in order is indicated ctr we seldom need ctr in pseudo exfoliation because those zonules are weak but are generally they are there all around so by just modifying the phaco parameters we can complete the surgery and to prevent post-op spike we need to be more touchy to clean the lens matter and take care of the viscoelastic aspiration at the end of the procedure. And our objective will be to place the lens inside the bag. High myopia is another challenge where the zonules may be weak. There may be low scleral rigidity, which will just push the vitreous anteriorly. The chamber is very deep. Zonules may be weak. The posterior capsule may be thinner than regular cases, so more easily damaged. The liquefied vitreous, if there is a loss, it will keep on coming. And we know that there is difficulty in IL power calculation in high myopia. And we discussed in biometry issues, SRKT formula may be good in high myops. Closed chamber technique is the indicator technique in this myopic eyes. Then we can adjust the bottle height. And scleral incision should not be made too deep because of the scleral rigidity and thinness. Again, gentle hydro procedure and gentle dialing or rotation of the nucleus may be altogether avoided. And in challenging cases, the vitrectomy support should be available because we know in spite of all the precautions, there may be unexpected visit of vitreous. So there is a little break. Thank <laughs> you.
तो वो तो फिर ये आलम शौक का देखा ना जाए रेड लिप्स हाँ रेड क्रीसेंट बहरा अहमर भी रेड सी है ना तो अहमरी लब वापस चले जाते हैं हाँ वो तो शायर भी कहता है कि ये असल में सुर्खी से नहीं हुए बल्कि उस शाख का खून पीने से सुर्ख हुए तो चेहरा ये जाना पे है रंगों का ऐसा इम्तजाज काली आंखें अहमरी लब उस पे गालों के गुलाब ब्लैक आईज रेड लिप्स एंड रोज लाइक चीक्स तो स्वेरिटी एंड नेचर ऑफ द सबलेशन एज वी डिस्कस कंजेनिटल एंड एक्वाइर्ड प्रोग्रेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इट मे बी प्रोग्रेसिव और स्टैटिक दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्लाइड यू सी मिनिमल टू माइल्ड वन थर्ड अबाउट जोनियल डेफिशियंसी मॉडरेट हाफ ऑफ द जोनियल आर गॉन एंड स्वीयर टू थर्ड ऑफ द जोनियल आर गॉन so mild to moderate can be managed easily and we can save the back and we can use that back for intraocular lens implantation but if it is half or more probably that back cannot be saved but still there is a lesson you see lensectomy is a very attractive word which simply the seniors order once they see subluxated lens either they make you write a simple lensectomy or lensectomy with scleral fixation or lensectomy with ciul but i tell you in spite of all these experience and so, dealing with so many challenging cases lensectomy is not a very straight forward thing it is always associated with some dispersion of lens matter in vitreous cavity because there is no way to control that and that's why see luckily there is no posterior segment surgeon sitting here uh, unluckily or luckily if there is any vitreo retinal surgeon sitting in an anterior segment or phaco discussion they will always rise and start talking about post plan approach in pediatric cataract in simple vitreous prolapse they say why don't you go through post planar route post planar route is a strange route for an anterior segment surgeon and though there are many refinements actually phaco has revolutionized the whole ophthalmic surgical approach close chamber technique has given rise to so many modifications in posterior segment surgery as well posterior segment surgery is also becoming sutureless after impressed getting impressed by phaco there are 23 gauge 27 gauge 25 gauge cannulas available but post planar entry is always associated with certain risk of retinal complication in creating holes and the posterior segment surgeon what they say here is that the lensectomy should be performed through post planar and i take care of the whole vitreous at the same time so why not preserve the capsular back as you will see later in the videos as long as you can if you can use capsular hooks and tension ring you can perform the irrigation aspiration inside the capsular back after completing the irrigation aspiration then you can get rid of the capsular bag and sclerally fixate or perform tucking of the ul haptics so these are the tools which are available to us this is a simple ring which is available and we use it it can come preloaded as well and these are the iris hooks which we can use for stabilization of the capsule as well this is a silicon lock and we use simple mbo blade or 15 degree blade 
to perform stab in C and then clear cornea, insert the hook, engage the iris or the capsule, and lock it with this silicone lock. Minimal to mild zonular weakness. This is a traumatic case. So we know this is non progressive in nature, and the deficiency of zonules is about less than one third or just one fourth of the total 360 degrees. So this is an ideal case for CTR insertion, and we can leave it without suturing. As we discussed, initi the initiation of the capsular axis is from attached zonules to detached zonules. Pull the capsule towards the detached zonules. So you can modify the place where you start the axis routinely will not be the case in cases of zonular compromise. And if there is a marked subluxation, you can use this cross sole technique. What is cross sole technique? You have two needles, one from right side, one from left side, and then you take the support of the needle bevel on one on each other and place the first cut. Or you can use kind of step incision into the capsule with the help of 11 number blade or 15 degree blade. If it is very mobile. Cross sole technique is good in these situations. And after you are able to create the first nick in the center and the lens is very mobile, you can insert one hook right there and then complete the rest of the axis. That will support the area of weak zonules. And number of capsular hooks maybe one, two, three, four, or five, depending upon the kind of stability you need. And once one or two hooks are applied, it becomes easy to perform the rexes. And as we already discussed, the use of tension ring is number two or secondary after initial stabilization with the capsular hooks, we perform the irrigation aspiration of echoemulsification, and then we insert the tension ring. Tangential aspiration is the thing which is different from what we do routine, engage, detach, and suck technique, which were which we were discussing for lens matter and cortical matter aspiration, what we do is we engage the lens matter, we pull it towards the center of the pupil in the wheel axis. That is radial pull. You detach it by pulling towards the center. So here it is tangential pull. So what is a tangent? Tangent is a line which touches the circle only at one point. That is tangent. So tangential pull is, we will be just pulling the lens matter into the fornix, not towards the center, so that there is no extra stress on the zonules. And most of the time, we will be completing our irrigation aspiration near the fornix. And as we discussed already, the long-term fixation need to be kept in mind if the Subluxation is progressive in nature. We need to take some mechanism of suture fixation or haptic tucking. And any surgeon who embarks or takes up these cases need to be good with anterior vitrectomy techniques. And the technique generally indicated is by manual bimanual anterior vitrectomy. And what is the stage of vitrectomy? It's amazing. You will see in the coming videos, it may be used anytime before 
capsular axis during capsular axis after capsular axis before phaco emulsification before irrigation aspiration after irrigation aspiration before intraocular lens implant after intraocular lens implant before visco aspiration after visco aspiration whenever we realize that there is vitreous prolapse we take care of it and we can use injection canocord to stain the vitreous but be careful in pediatric cases if some canocord goes in the vitreous cavity it can be troublesome as long as post op rise of intraocular pressure is concerned and for fixation we need permanent sutures like proline and be ready for intraoperative modification of plants role of iris retractors or capsule retractors we have discussed these cases are generally associated with poor dilation of the pupil so iris and capsule retractors help both ways they can be used to dilate the pupils and they can be used to stabilize the capsule implantation of ctr we have discussed it prevents capsular phimosis and as late in the surgery we implant ctr is more convenient if we implant it before phaco emulsification it is cumbersome to implant one second it makes the irrigation aspiration of the lens matter difficult capsular axis we have discussed start from the detached uh, attached to detached lonules and be ready to use the second instrument the method of inserting the capsular hook is very simple perform a stab in cn with mbr blade or 15 degree or 110 blade about you need about 20 gauge entry or and then insert the hook engage the iris or the capsule and lock it with silicone lock number of hooks depend on the depends on the kind of stability and the kind of compromise you have hydro dissection and delineation is very controlled very slow multi quadrant multi sessions don't try to do it in one go and then hydro delineation and hydro prolapse are all important techniques and you need to have the good size of the rexis ctr is implanted in the capsular bag iul implantation multi piece lens with round design round edges square edge lens i will again stress is contraindicated to be placed in the sulcus and because there are so many challenges in these cases so as a routine we order multi piece intraocular lens for these cases they are easy to fixate and easy to tackle there are different kinds of rings with eyelets and hooks and this is known as ring segment which can be implant implanted in specific area of weakness and it can be sutured to sclera and it's easy to insert because you don't need to go 360 degrees and if it is less than a one third of the zonular compromise we can use this ring segment instead of the full ring this is a marked morphonite fixation uh, sorry subluxation and i am using the toric marker to prepare for the scleral fixation sites these two marks are there 180 degrees apart and i have fortified them with the help of 110 blade so that later it is easy to identify the cauterization is performed the fixation site is ready i have fashioned a straight in cn and a tunnel and you see the lens is too mobile and i'm using the second instrument to get the necessary exposure 
the first nick is there again that t dialer is being used to get the view of the and you will say that why don't you implant a iris hook here so this is how i developed and refined the technique the four videos i have included are in chronological order this is where first time i started thinking and using the hooks utrata forceps is in the picture and with the by manual exposure and push pull technique i am able to perform rexes in this very mobile subluxated lens now i realize that the pupil has further got smaller and it's difficult to perform irrigation aspiration so after filling the anterior chamber with the viscoelastic here is the first iris hook through the stab in cn engages the iris the second one the lock will be pushed and it will dilate the pupil the lensectomy here appears very easy but that will always disperse the lens matter and will be difficult to perform especially in these poor dilation patients so you need to be patient and these are not the cases which can be taken up in busy cataract surgical centers where objective is to go for 50 to 100 cases a day because it may take about 4 5 cases can be performed regular which this one case will take that much of time after getting the necessary exposure the irrigation aspiration is being taken up and by patients and filling the bag again and again with viscoelastic we are able to complete 100% of irrigation aspiration inside the bag without dispersing any lens matter in the vitreous cavity so now that's where the decision was to remove the capsular bag because more than half of the zonules are deficient so this bag cannot be used i preserved this bag just to complete complete my irrigation aspiration in a safe and effective manner the anterior vitrectomy technique is always by manual for me and i perform deep anterior core vitrectomy as long as the cutter remains in focus with the microscope we cut it for vitreous the principle is if you need to cut it cut it well cut it deep because the half hearted vitrectomy will not serve the purpose anterior chamber maintainer is there the capsule hooks are removed straight proline needle goes in from the fixation site 1 mm behind the limbus initially directed towards the center of the vitreous cavity and then it is being retrieved through the opposite incision with the help of a visco cannula acting as a spatula the needle is taken out the suture is threaded one needle of the proline suture is out the suture is retrieved and cut see it it has passed across the eye from both fixation sites from one side 27 gauge bent needle went in from other side the proline needle came they met in the center with red roll technique and this is how the suture is threaded then it is being tied to the point of maximum convexity of the intraocular lens the haptic that is a multi piece acris of intraocular lens fold fold and insert technique is being used the only extra precaution is don't let your suture entangled be careful with the placement and orientation of the haptics the leading haptic 
is the one which need to be fixated at inferior fixation site and the trailing haptic is the one which will be fixated at superior fixation site the lens is finally positioned by gentle traction on both the sutures the proline needles are recurved and a bite is taken from the scleral bed and the sutures are tied to itself by secure to one 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 knot as many knots as you like but have a secure suture there our aim is to keep the iol haptic snugly opposed in ciliary sulcus because ultimate stability of the lens haptic will be ensured by fibrosis not the suture itself this is another case of morphonide ectopia lentis again it's more than half of the zonules are missing fixation site is being prepared the view of the capsule is better because the subluxation is inferior in this case it was superior in the previous case the superior ones are more difficult to tackle was able to perform rexis and multipore right and left entries for irrigation aspiration cannula and a successful completion of irrigation aspiration inside the bag please i have discussed it about 2 3 times why lensectomy is not a preferred option because the lens matter will disperse in the vitis cavity there is no way to stop that there is no cushion between the lens once you break the capsule and the you are taking care of the final bits of the lens matter some of the lens vitis is very difficult thing to have उट Without even putting the, you know, the hooks and tying the tube, because one portion of the lens was thicker, and through that the whole lens matter could have been escaped, and then the lens bag could have been removed. I mean, many steps were taken, but the outcome was to remove the whole particular bags. Yes, uh, Professor Nadeem has commented that why the irrigation aspiration was not completed by applying a simple nick. instead of attempting a capsular rexis i tell you this is an experience that you start through a nick and it looks very attractive that your irrigation aspiration cannula goes through the nick into the capsular bag and you complete the irrigation aspiration and you come out but it's not practical i tell you because if the rexis is the only thing even a small rexis in these microspheric lenses gives you a stable opening if it is a nick it will extend during your manipulations in an uncontrolled manner one second because in the previous case the subluxation was superior so in superior subluxations it is very difficult to take care of the lens matter which is behind the iris and i used the iris hook only when the view was not clear the simple message here is you have to done everything under vn 
so this is a kind of crust of so many cases that if you can have a small rexes in these cases that is a big blessing and if you can complete your irrigation aspiration in the intact bag it doesn't add many steps it gives very clean and very neat outcome in the end but you see the bigger the challenge the bigger the controversy this is a general rule the more difficult the cases are more different the opinions are ultimately you have to give a safe outcome according to your own approach and your own hands so that th this was the reason that i used hooks one indication is for the pupil the second indication is for the capsular bag this is more interesting now there is about one third of the subluxation and the patient is adult and they kept on waiting until the vn was hand motion it is a hyper mature lens so the challenge is even bigger but luckily the subluxation is mild to moderate so we are performing the regular steps air is injected the capsule is stained and you see i am pulling the capsule from attached towards the detached zonules and we are doing it under local anesthesia she is about 42 years of age as usual i have arranged a cris of multi piece intraocular lens the rings and the hooks are all ready so we are able to perform a successful rexis gentle hydro dissection here comes the first hook this is where the opinions differ some surgeons implant ctr at this stage but most of the surgeons advise to implant ctr as late as possible so one hook served the purpose slow motion for feco is in order is there <coughs> combined with chopping techniques and then with a little patience luckily the cataract is brittle in nature once you are able to crack it it's not difficult to emulsify but you need to be very gentle keep on taking deep breath give a little break and get focused again so bit by bit i am able to emulsify the whole lens successfully so now comes the ctr in picture it's simple ring and it's a bimanual insertion you have to watch few youtube videos and it has got a learning curve cana brava has got a channel on youtube gives very useful tips how to implant and learn ctr insertion so after ctr in placement the irrigation aspiration was easy because it distends the capsular bag the bag is filled with viscoelastic material the hook is removed remember one thing this is morphonite subluxation though it has presented late but we know it is progressive that's why now the fixation is there it was it will be centered at the end of the surgery but very soon the whole iul ctr capsular bag complex will be subluxated if not fixated and i am going to use haptic externalization and tucking technique which i have modified from yamane i have my own 
little modification and innovation in Jimani's technique as well. Instead of using forceps, I use needle. The needle first goes tangentially into the sclera, then is redirected to the center of the vitreous cavity, comes into view, pierces the capsular bag near the fornix, and is retrieved outside through the second in CN, which I have performed intentionally. So there are two in CNs here, 180 degrees apart. The lens is implanted, and then the haptics are externalized to those in CNs for haptic externalization and tucking. After the haptic is externalized, it is heated with a heated squint hook. The needle comes out through the opposite axis. The haptic is being fed into the needle. And then it generally rotates, goes behind the iris, and the haptic is externalized through the fixation or tucking site. Once the haptic comes out, a heated squint hook is used to turn the haptic end into a bulb, bulbous appearance, so that it can be tucked into the sclera. So in the end, I completed the vitrectomy, and the patient has got excellent visual outcome of 6-9 and sutureless surgery with haptic externalization and tucking into the sclera. This is a final case. This is traumatic subluxation. And in the outlook, it just resembles a previous case. Traumatic subluxation. Subluxation is here inferiorly and it is just not visible, but there is a little vitreous here as well, which we had scanned and screened carefully. So simple phaco steps initially. Phaco NCN is fashioned. A little adrenaline is injected into the anterior chamber. Viscoelastic comes to deepen the anterior chamber and a little viscoelastic spread over the cornea acts as a magnifying lens. Two ports on the side. Capsular axis from attached towards detached zonules, good size because the zonule compromise is about one third. So it's not difficult to perform. You see, the vitrectomy has come into picture because you see there is a little crescent now visible here from which the vitreous is coming into the anterior chamber. So for these cases, the vitrectomy will come into action at any given time. Then comes the capsular hook or iris hook to stabilize the capsule in the area of zonular weakness. It's not difficult to insert. Hydrodissection. A good wave was seen going behind the nucleus and multi quadrant yellow ring sign is also there for hydro delineation then the cold phaco with lower vital height low aspiration flow rate low vacuum and low power of the phaco and again be gentle with your cracking and be patient until you are able to chop it at some place. It was relatively difficult in this case. So I kept on creating the crater in the center because the nucleus size was bigger and it was not giving me the margin to chop it. Once the nucleus tails a little bit, 
only then you can use your chop and the brittle nature of the nucleus matter was not letting the phaco hold it so patience and patience and patience is the answer in these situations don't get panic ultimately i was able to rotate the nucleus and at one place it got tilted then i used viscoelastic to tilt it further so that it gets in ideal position for final emulsification and viscoelastic judicious use of viscoelastic is the name of game in these cases the bag remained extended and i was able to prolapse the perinucleus anteriorly and then again the phaco needle came into the view and the life was easy now because of that little visco manipulation of the perinucleus after completion of the phaco emulsification another hook is being implanted because there may be a little stress on the zonules during the phaco process so irrigation aspiration again very slow drop by drop and gentle and coupled with judicious use of viscoelastic completes the removal of cortical matter and this is a area of all intact zonules here is where the zonule deficiency is there because we have removed the nucleus so that deficiency is very evident the tension ring is being inserted the final part of the ring goes in by manual technique you are there with your second instrument just to stabilize and final positioning as long as the ring was there the bag was extended and multi piece intraocular lens was injected through 2.75 mm in cn right into the capsular bag and because this subluxation is traumatic in origin and i have performed the vitrectomy thoroughly and the ring is there in place so this is non progressive in nature so i am not going to fixate it you we can leave it as such and this patient is also there in our follow up for about 8 to 9 months the lens is well centered and again the vn equity or is again 69 and it is all stitchless phaco as good as a regular phaco but with a little bit more patience and perseverance so hera ho ke dekhti hai phir hawaye tundo tez hera ho ke dekhti hai phir hawaye tundo tez dheemi lo ka ye charav कैसे जलता रह गया सो कंक्लूजन द फेको यूजिंग द रिट्रैक्टर इज अ गुड ऑप्शन टू डील विद सबलेक्सेशन एंड वीक जोन्यूल्स इंडिकेशन ऑफ सी टी आर एज लेट इन द सर्जरी एज पॉसिबल इंटेलिजेंट यूज ऑफ आयरस एंड कैप्चुर हुक्स मेक द लाइफ इजी एंड वी नीड टू बी गुड विद इंटीरियर विट्रैक्टमी टेक्निक्स फॉर सेफ आउटकम्स तो ये दिस इज अबाउट आवर नेशन दायरों में चलते हैं दायरों में चलने से सफर तो गुजरता है फासले नहीं कटते थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर टेंशन it it generally doesn't run so if, if if the your ccc has run away still i will try as you advised to complete the irrigation aspiration in the bag and if it still not works then lensectomy is there because we will again be careful we'll keep on 
giving good tamponade with viscoelastic to the vitreous phase and will try to be as careful as possible because this technique i have shown you is there for me for about two and a half years and for about last 20 years plus we were doing the lensectomies so lensectomy is not a bad option is in order only the thing need to be kept in mind is that even lensectomy can be coupled with good dilation of the pupil and use of iris hooks so that you are able to take care of all the residual matter under your vn and lensectomy which appears very attractive is not that attractive i tell you the lens matter which is lying behind the iris because you cannot pull the capsule you are eating it with the cutter so there is no capsule visible and sometimes the whole chunk of lens matter and the capsule is sitting right in the periphery and everything is clear in the pupil and you have fixated the lens or you have implanted the lens of your choice and you are out but on the second day that lens matter from the fornix is gradually going into the vitreous cavity and causing a lot of reaction postoperatively so this young vitreous is not good for lens matter dispersion that's the only thing to be kept in mind but if you aim for the ideals after adopting these techniques alhamdulillah i am able to do it now in every case once you get used to it there was initial curve and second beauty the lectures you are inviting here and the chances i get to present at osp forums they always keep on adding few things because the idea and audience keep on adding and you have accepted a challenge to present you are reviewing that's why i was able to learn it and adopt it in my practice so these ideals are to be adopted and are to be met for safe outcomes after moving the vitreous and in the eye. But I have experienced who put the CPR just after the hypothesis. At least you are, you know, that's why you have five many months of the vision. So there were numerous cataracts, so you were very good. So I was able to put the CPR after the hypothesis. And then that's the perfect experience. I didn't see any other point. So I think the view, if you is not more like or moderate or the white character, then we have about 20 of the people. So Dr. Zakir Sheikh is here with a comment that uh, the time of implantation of CTR. We have already discussed it that many surgeons implant the CTR just after the initial nick in the capsule or after just after rexis and complete the phaco emulsification and irrigation aspiration after implantation of CTR. There is no harm in it, but it makes the life difficult in these dense cases a little. And it is a little bit more cumbersome to implant in dense cataracts, but we already have given the margin to implanting it at any time but this is the bottom line of ctr use i am giving you that is implant the ctr as late as possible in the surgery but never too late we are stabilizing the zonular defect with capsule hooks one two three as many as you like no i did not do any phaco without hook even i did not do any irrigation aspiration without hook or ctr and the second thing is capsule hook is more friendly and more versatile because the capsule hook can be used in any case in half subluxation in two-thirds subluxation, CTR can be only implanted if it is about less than one-third. Because the CTR, you need to be your length relatively in the center. 
for a safe implantation of CTR. So these two things complement each other and they don't replace each other. They complement each other. The placement of the hook makes the life easy, makes the implantation of CTR easy. So the first thing to use is capsule hook followed by CTR in my practice. Thank you very much.